Hi there, my name is Victoria Bowler and today we are looking at some singing games for upper elementary music. Let's frame our thinking here around two studies and I bring them up because I think that they can have some implications for how we approach singing games in our classes and how we approach upper elementary activities in general. First, in this study from Christopher Roberts, the researcher wanted to know if fourth and second grade students preferred competitive or non-competitive singing games. Which one do you think he found? Competitive. And this makes sense to me. My students also love competitive singing games. But to me, what's even more interesting is not necessarily that they preferred competitive singing games, but more interesting to me is the reasons they gave for why they prefer competitive over non-competitive singing games. And in this study, the reason that students gave for preferring these types of games was about the kinesthetic activity. It was about the movement element. And even for the students who said that they preferred non-competitive singing games, the reason was the same. They also cited the movement piece of it. So what does that tell us? To me, it tells me that movement is really, really important for these students. And this is what that same researcher found in an earlier study when he wanted to know when fourth grade music students were the most interested during class. So here's a quote from one of those fourth grade participants in that study. This student said, you know, because we're kids, we like being active instead of just sitting there saying so la do. And you notice how all of us, most of the time, are moving around, not sitting still. So one of the things that this researcher noticed in the videos of class that were used as a part of the data set is when students were preparing for their end of the year concert, there was a lot more off task behavior. So things like um, students staring into space or messing with their shoelaces, things like that. And then when the researcher switched to an active singing game, the engagement level went way up. So the participation was a lot stronger, um, way more students were singing, the focus was a lot better, things like that. So with all of that in mind, let's take all of this and look at some singing games for upper elementary music. Let's set our game level to upper elementary. And then we'll look at some chasing games as well as elimination, jumping, and objects. I call this category chasing, tagging, and racing. Let's look at deedle deedle dumpling first. My game to this is one that I have just recycled from another singing game. For this, we're going to create two concentric circles and students are going to take hands. On the outside of each circle, I'm gonna have John number one and John number two. So two Johns on the outside. And inside our concentric circles, we're going to put one shoe. Secretly, the teacher is going to choose two sets of students, so a set from the outside and the inside circle, to be our secret doorways. Very quick pause here. If you want to simplify this game, you can do it with one circle, so a single circle instead of two concentric circles. Totally up to you. So we're all going to sing while we walk in a circle. Deedle deedle dumpling, my son John went to bed with his stockings on. One shoe off and one shoe on. Deedle deedle dumpling, my son John. At the end of the game, whoever was chosen to be those secret doorways, they're going to raise their hands and both Johns from either side of the circles, they're going to race. They can only go through those open doorways, but they're going to race through the doors and see who can get to that shoe in the middle first. Amy Fitzner has a different version of this game and my students really like this one as well. So for this, students are standing in a circle and one student is walking around the outside while everybody sings the song. At the end, that person on the outside is going to land behind two people in the circle. Those two players are going to take off one shoe each and then race around the circle and whoever gets back and can put their shoe on first is the winner. Next, let's look at Doña Araña. This is kind of the opposite of that first game to Deedle Deedle Dumpling we talked about where both players were trying to get inside the circles to get the shoe. Now I have a student who's trying to escape the circle. So for this, we're still going to do two concentric circles and you can still make it one single circle if you want to make it a little bit easier. Let's imagine that you just want to do the single circle version of this game. So students are going to take hands and secretly the teacher is going to choose one pair of students to be the opening. 
inside this circle, and by the way, it's not a circle in this game, it is a spider web. So inside our spider web, I have a fly. And on the outside of the circle, one student is the spider. So a spider on the outside, fly on the inside. We're going to walk in a circle while we sing the song. Doña Araña se fue a pasear, hizo un hilo y se puso a trepar. Vino el viento, la hizo bailar. Vino la tormenta, la hizo bajar. And then at the end of the game, the two students who were chosen to be that opening pathway, they are going to raise their hands and the fly needs to escape from the spider web and get to the safe zone, wherever that safe zone wall is in your classroom, get to that safe zone before they're tagged by the spider. So this is a chasing and tagging game. Very quickly, when we think about scaffolding and adaptations for chasing games in an upper elementary music classroom context, there are a couple things that we can do. First, in something like Doña Araña, where students need to connect hands somehow, I will often, if it's going to be kind of an issue, I'll have students start the game where the fly and the spider can get to each other at any point in the circle, so no one has connected hands. And then when we do connect hands, it's a a way to make the game more interesting because if we're not connected and that spider and that fly can get through in any place in the circle, the game is not as fun as when there's only one opening. So I don't really care how students connect. They can connect with fingertips. They can connect with pinkies. They can touch their thumbs together. It's totally up to them. Next, when we're thinking about doing this in a closed space like a classroom, safety is definitely something that we keep in mind. So something that we can do is have students jump with two feet instead of run, or you can have them do a one foot hop instead of run. Another option is to have students walk on their heels instead of running. Um, another option that I do often is they have a set number of beats and they can only step on the steady beat. So if we were to do this with Doña Araña at the end, we might say um, you only have eight steps to escape from the spider. So you say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and stop. That's nice because it eliminates the running, but there's still a chasing element. And then the other thing is it gives a kind of a time bound structure to the game so that we know that after a set number of beats, even if that fly has not been caught by the spider, the game is over. Elimination games are also a blast. For this one, we are going to take our right hand and put it up and our left hand will put it down so that when we connect our hands, I have my students, you know, put them on the elevator so that my right hand is on top of my neighbor's left hand and my left hand is below my neighbor's right hand. And then we're gonna keep this beat passing around the room. So I'm gonna take my right hand and just very gently touch my neighbor's right hand. So, vamos a jugar el juego de la la oca loca che, balo, 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 me, chico, 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 che, uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez. I like this one a lot, especially for at the beginning of the year and especially for older beginners because number one, they don't have to sing anything. This is all with our speaking voice. And number two, they can participate with that steady beat motion around the circle even before they know the rhyme and they can count to 10 at the end before they know the rest of the text. So this is uh, the game of the silly goose, and then we have some vocables. At the end of this game, whoever 10 lands on, so the last beat, whoever 10 lands on, that person would be out. But the reason this game is really fun is if you can see ahead of time that that beat is coming to you and you're gonna be on 10, you can pull your hand so you don't get tagged. And instead, that other person who is trying to tag your hand, they would be out instead of you. So the hand pulling element makes this game really fun. One game to one variant of El Floron has students all standing in a circle while we pass a ball. It needs to be a squishy ball um, around the circle while we're singing. El Floron pasó por aquí, yo no lo vi, yo no lo vi. El Floron pasó por aquí, yo no lo vi, yo no lo vi. Que pase, que pase, que pase el florón. Que pase, que pase, que pase el florón. 
So the florone was passing by here, but I didn't see it. And then whoever has the ball at the end of the song, they are going to sit down and we keep passing the ball around, but we're skipping that person who is now seated. So that means, you know, if you have two people seated right next to each other, we're going to have to toss the ball over some people's heads. So eventually this becomes like a tossing game in a circle. Another version, if you want to kind of step it up a little bit more, another version of this is that the people who are seated they are allowed to swat the ball and see if they can mess up the people who are passing it above their heads. They need to stay seated the whole entire time. They're not allowed to stand up. They're not allowed to jump up. But if they can reach up and get that ball and mess up the people who are passing it above them, then they are back in the game. Last one is Big Fat Biscuit. This is a jumping game from the Sea Islands. And it goes like this. Here we go. Big Fat Biscuit Chubaloo just from the oven, Chubaloo boy, jump over yonder, Chubaloo. For this game, we're going to have students line up shoulder to shoulder, and then at some point in the song, we're going to see who can jump out the furthest. For this, it's going to be a two-footed jump and not a leap. Or if it is a leap, you just want to specify that ahead of time so that everyone's on the same page. The way I do this is slightly different from what's notated in the source, uh, but at every chubaloo, one person is going to jump out. So big fat biscuit, first person jumps just from the oven, second person jumps, boy jump over yonder, third person jumps, and then whoever jumps the furthest is the winner. Okay, so today we looked at several different examples of singing games for upper elementary music, and we framed them in the context of how important it is for these students to move. If you have a question or a comment about this video, I would love to hear from you. You can drop a comment below, you can find me on Instagram, or you can shoot me an email, victoria at victoriabowler.com. Thank you so much for watching, and happy teaching!